Hey Trevor, what kind of engine are we going to build today? Get ready for an engine that's magnificent. Ooh. Colossal. Ah. Why, it's even stupendous. Gee, it sounds really big. What is it? It's the Mercury. Edsel. Lincoln. Otherwise known as the M. This engine came out in 1958 and was a whopping 430 cubic inches. They used it in the Mercury Park Lane, the Edsel Citation, and the Lincoln Continental Mark III. This was the Big Mama motor that they used in the Big Mama cars. And you can find this engine in any of the AMT Ertl 1925 Model T kits, like the Pie Wagon as well, and even the Three Stooges Model T Kit. Do -do 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 -do. So Danny, without further ado, let's go and grab the tools from up here and I'll meet you personally down on the bench where we will build the Mel Motor. Oh boy, it's lesson time again. So to get a better understanding of our Mel engine, we will again look to our Chilton's Auto Repair Manual from 1954 to 1953, given to me by my good friend John. The one thing that I found out about the Mel engine is that it is essentially an enlarged Ford FE block. It's designed the exact same way, only everything is that much bigger in it. You have to realize that the regular Ford FE engine was 352 cubic inches when they bored it out, and that this one is 430 cubic inches, so already you have quite a huge engine, and that is not from boring it out. That's its natural size. So again, that's the difference between the Mel engine and the Ford FE. That's so cool that you have that big book. Here we have the instruction sheet for our MEL engine from the Three Stooges Model T kit. And as you can see, we have three different options. We have a tricarb option, we have a latham blower option with side draft carburetors, and we also have a tricarb option as well. So imagine this is the biggest Ford engine and here we're adding in all this extra power. I guess the closest would be the tricarb to stock and the rest is either custom or drag racing. And then here we have our engine block right and left hand side, the oil pan with the actual pan facing the right way with the uh, deep part forward. We have our cylinder heads and our valve covers. One thing I noticed about the valve covers in my research is these are from the 1956-57 Lincoln Continental and not the 58, but that's okay. We have our pulleys and our fan here. The generator is mounted up top, and I do believe that is to clear the Model T frame, because on the regular Mel engine, this would be down and along the side of the engine block. We have two different magnetos. The upright magneto is used on the tricarb version, as well as the six-carb version. And the one that's lying on the side is, of course, for our Laham blower, which will be, you know, sticking out in the way. The Laham blower also includes the blower belt drive which omits the fan and the generator, but has enough stuff to power up the blower itself. Then we've got our side draft carburetors with the four air cleaners. We've got the tricarbs here with these rams on the top and carburetor balls that you stuff in there, I guess as an air cleaning method. And then we've got our log manifold. And over on this side with our tricarbs, we have the tricarburetors themselves, as well as the bells and the balls. And we also get a dual coil setup. Now, I found something out interesting about these magnetos in another book, and we'll just take a look at that really quickly. So Danny, I found this book in my collection of things, and it's called Your Sports Car Engine, and it was written by Carl E. Ludvigsen. And this came out in 1958, which is right in line with our model car series here, 58 to 60. And inside here, I found this cool exploded view of the magneto. 
as well as a picture of one. And what basically the magneto does is it it allows a spark to happen without actually using any of the electricity from the actual car electricity system, electrical system. What it uses instead is its own electricity. It generates it itself, and then it provides all the sparks to the spark plugs. And you plug in your spark plugs through these holes all on the side of the magneto. And that is how the magnetos work, so that you can use the engine without having any engine wiring going inside the car to that system. Oh, so that's how a magneto works. I always wondered why they put them in all these engine blocks. Oh, wow, good thing you found that book. Yeah, Danny, it is really good that I have that book. Hey, I noticed something else here. This is another set of instructions from the Ford Model T kits. And in this Mel motor, they actually have the cylinder heads and the intake manifold as one piece. Then they have the tricarbs with another magneto and different air cleaners up here. So you could actually build this engine four ways, but two ways have two different setups for our tricarbs. Wow, that's really cool. Here we have our plastic components for our MEL engine. And as you can tell, there's a lot of different options going on with this. So let's begin with our chrome-plated oil pan, our engine block halves, our cylinder heads, the separate ones, as well as our chrome 1956 Lincoln valve covers. Here we have our exhaust manifolds. Then we have three different intake manifolds. This one is for the three barrel six pack, which of course will include these two banks of carburetors. Then we have our intake manifold for just the regular tricarbs. Then we have this one, which includes the cylinder heads and the tricarb manifold. And that one goes with this setup here. So there's our tricarbs and our magneto. And these little air cleaner tops will pop onto the tops of our carburetors here, as well as onto our side draft carburetors for the Laham blower, which is the racing option. We also have the pulley drive system for our Laham blower, as well as the magneto that's mounted on its side for the blower just for clearance. So here we have our generator, as well as our belts and pulleys, the fan, the dual coils sitting here, the magneto for this setup with these intakes. Then, like I said before, the four air cleaner tops. Then we have these air cleaner trumpets, as you can see here. And these are the little tiny balls that will pop inside the trumpets. And to wrap it all up, we have two different shift levers, a chrome one with a gentle curve, and then this black plastic one, or whatever color your plastic will be molded in. And it's quite a bend, almost like a Big Daddy Roth monster car style. So there's all the components that will make up this engine. And I have enough engines to make up three out of these different options. So let's go and start to put this thing together. The first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that our engine block halves fit together nice and tight. And as my uncle used to say, on the back here are some pins and holes, locator pins and holes, that uh, you can put the engine together with. Now this one goes together really nicely, but nine times out of ten these are out of alignment because the molds are quite old, and of course they don't quite line up from the factory. So I've got all my different tools here and my tester's glue. So what we will do is we will sand one half of the engine block. And then we'll sand off the pins on the other half here. And I want to make sure that I can see what I'm doing. Okay. Then we will run around here with our glue. And I will glue this together and move the engine block up and down, left and right, and everywhere else to make sure that everything lines up once it's glued together. And then when it is glued together, I'm going to scrape down the seam lines with my number 11 hobby blade, and then test the fit of all these other components and see how they will all line up. And then clean up the components as well on their own before we glue them to the engine block. I ran into a stroke of luck here because I actually found an extra MEL motor sitting in the spare parts box that I got from somebody and whoever built it before did not 
scrape off the paint from the parts or the chrome or any of that so that this thing was just basically held together very very lightly by some glue and as you can see like under here nothing scraped so I was able just to take my fingernail and pop all the parts off I also got the engine split in half because they had painted it I guess on the parts tree and got paint in underneath so this whole thing fell apart easily I was able to sand it and get it all together so what I'm showing here is the different intakes that we have and I did discover there's a fifth way to build this engine but it's sort of irrelevant because the Laham blower can fit on this intake manifold and this intake manifold but the end result is that it looks the same only this is a bit higher up because of the difference in the the way the intake manifold is sitting on the cylinder heads and all the rest but essentially it's the same so I'm not going to build a fifth one just to show oh here's a slightly different intake manifold but anyway what we have here is the Laham blower and the side draft carburetors then we've got this set up with the tricarbs using the same little square cleaners which will pop on the ends or on the top here so I'm going to build one of these engines in this style with those air cleaners and then here's the tricarb version and then we've got our six pack version as well so I'll be able to build one each of these motors and this one being copper will be painted copper again and that can represent the Lincoln Continental engine and then this one could be black to represent the Mercury engine because that's the colors they were in and then either of these could be an Edsel or whichever else because we've got one spare but we will have an M, E and an L motor Mercury, Edsel, Lincoln You mean they had different colors for each of the motor divisions? Here we have our engine block glued together and the seam line sanded down. I used my sandpaper and cross sanded, of course, and then any place like sandpaper couldn't reach, I used my hobby blade and scraped down. I used my number 11 blade, not the 16 I just showed. <laughs> However, now as you can see here, our holes are not quite lined up perfectly and in the back as well. So I have the hole alignment tool that my dad made. You can do the same with the drill, just shove it in the hole and give a little twist and these should now align the two holes together. And I've got the chrome oil pan here because I noticed something. There's a little pin that sticks out here for alignment and if you look at the hole it's not a perfect circle through there. It's like got a flat spot on one side and it should align the oil pan up nicely, which it does. However, what I noticed is that it's just ahead a slight little bit and it won't allow the front of the oil pan to push into the uh, bottom here because there's a little bit of a lip off the front cover. So what we can do is just take and cut this pin off carefully like that. And now, keep in mind that the front of the oil pan is the biggest bit. That now all of a sudden fits in perfectly. Oh, and in case you want to know, there's the oil filter on the front. The FE motor didn't have one, but the MEL does. Wow! Now we have our engine block and our cylinder heads and intake manifold all nicely cleaned up. So what I did for this was I took the cylinder heads and I sanded them that way and I also sanded them where the exhausts are going to hit just to uh, make sure that's all nice and flat I cleaned up this edge with the finer sandpaper so that when we paint it it looks nice for the intake manifold I also had to take it and sand it on the block just to make sure everything was nice and flat so what I want to show now is on the individual cylinder heads there is a bump right up here sort of like a long rectangle that will go towards the front of your engine because if you put it at the back the intake manifold the way it's set up the two little holes go toward the front for lining up with the uh, hole for our magneto sitting here and if that line is at the back it prevents the manifold from lining up to that point so instead 
if you flip it around to the front, then the manifold stops on the second uh, inlet. So that's where we want it to be. Now, what I'm going to do with this engine is I'm going to paint it black, but I think I'll paint the intake manifold with aluminum because then it'll sort of match the uh, mercury motor as I believe they are. Here we have our other style of intake manifold with the cylinder heads in place, molded as one piece. And I've cleaned up our painted engine here from the parts box, just to show you how this goes. So this whole entire piece will fit on right on the top, just like that, with the three holes here facing forward. And then we've got our tricarbs with the square pieces of the carburetor they face forward. They're your fuel mixing bowls. And then the little bit on the end of the magneto, the little point there, will go into the hole right here. So all of this will align and hook together nicely. So remember that those three holes, or two holes, on the top of our intake manifold are going toward the front. Here's our intake manifolds and carburetors, as well as some of the chrome air cleaner covers that are going to be going on our different engine manifolds. So on our six barrel carburetor log, I've scraped off the paint on the top, which was easily done by holding it to the block of sandpaper. I also cleared the chrome off here and on these little end points. That's because they were full of seam lines, so I just wanted to correct that. And then I scraped off here, 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 and here for on our attachment on our engine block so that we've got something to glue onto. And then the other thing is to clear out the holes in here and on our carburetors toward the bottom. I cleared off the entire bottom, including those little pins. And then we can drop them into the manifold afterwards with a little bit of glue on it. And then they'll go, go in there and hold forever. Remember the square parts go to the front because that's your mixing bowl chamber for your fuel. So then it will end up something like this on the engine. We've got our intake manifold sitting here. And then I cleaned off the bottom on the carburetors there. Just so we can glue that to there. Then I've also scraped the chrome or the gold paint off along the edges here so that we can fit our little trumpets on. I scraped the bottom of the trumpet off and a little bit around the inside just by taking the number 11 hobby blade and carefully rolling it in here for the chrome to scrape off because the chrome or the part is going to glue to the side of the carburetors just like that. Now on these cutoff points where it was attached to the sprue I want to make them face forward so that one trumpet will be, you know, there, the next one will be there, and then so on, so that the little knocked off pieces of chrome will be covered by the trumpet in front. And you can also just quickly touch them up with a little bit of chrome paint there. One other thing that's going to be difficult with these trumpets is that they've got a glue on, and then you've got this little black thing, which is the carburetor ball and that's got to drop in and glue inside sort of like that <laughs> and I've got nine of those to do so that'll be very interesting so moving these off to the side we've got our tricarbs with the magneto for the other style intake manifold and again I've scraped off the paint on the top as well as the pins and underneath and the pin on the, the magneto <laughs> and uh, I'm going to have to paint the magneto silver, but I'll do that once I glue on the little air cleaner covers and touch up the chrome on them. And I've also scraped out the bottom of those with the point of the number 11 hobby blade. And then finally we have our blower here. And what I've done is cleared out the chrome on the inner cross in here, or the Y. And then I've also scraped off the chrome here on the little button. That's where it's going to attach. Cleared off the chrome on that little button for our belt and pulley drive, which will glue onto the front there. And then on these carburetors, I scraped the tops off so that I can put the same little 
caps on the end and then they'll all be nice and chrome looking and once this is together it actually looks really nice you got to make sure that you got the right detail facing upward there is a little bit of a bit of play in here these can end up sloping down like this so you just got to be careful on how you glue them make sure you've got pressure up there till the glue dries but as you can see that'll look really nice once it's all completed oh i like that here we have an illustration of our e475 and i think the paint that matches this the best is scarsnick green from the games workshop that's a neat color one thing I noticed about our engine is that these alignment bars on our cylinder heads work really well when you're trying to align the intake manifold here. As you can see, it's designed to fit perfectly in there. But when it comes to our six-pack log, it seems as if it's either too far forward or now you're too far back on the engine block. So what I think I will do is remove them using my file and then I'm able to place these sort of at a midway point in between. Here's our Mel engine with those alignment bars removed and as you can see there's enough plastic on here so that I didn't leave holes in where the bars were and now since those are gone our fuel log can fit anywhere along the engine where it should be. Okay, Danny, here's the big engine reveal. Right here we have our Mercury engine, then we've got our two Edsels, and the Lincoln at the end. The first engine we're going to look at is our Mercury engine, and what's nice about these kits is there is actually little divot holes right where the spark plugs would be, so you could drill them out and then wire your engine. This one has a Laham blower on it, as well as a Magneto, which is hidden up under the front. And again, it looks very nice. I did use the 1 16th hobby drill to drill out the ends of the exhaust pipes here. There is a cut, two holes in this thing. One is on the top of the manifold, and the other is in the front of the engine behind this belt here. You could use some very thin evergreen styrene rod to fill in the holes and then cut them off and paint them the color. I'll leave the rod number in the description below. Here's our Edsel 475. 475 stood for the torque rating of this engine, even though the cubic inches were 430. We have our, our ram horns up here, and inside the ram horns are the six carburetor balls, which I painted white. The valve covers are actually from a 5657 Lincoln Continental Mark III. Here we have dual coils, and this of course is our six two barrel manifold. And then here we have a Spalding Flamethrower Ignition. Here's our second Edsel 475. This time around I used the black carburetor balls in the ram horns. What I found with the ram horns is they are oversized a little bit, so they don't fit where you can have these going straight up and down. They have to be arced, which is kind of a pain. Then we also have our dual coils here, and again the 5657 Lincoln Continental valve covers.
And last but not least, we have our Lincoln motor, which was salvaged out of the parts box, so I don't have the nice manifold sticking out here. This one uses the alternate intake manifold and cylinder heads. I also changed the gear shift lever in the back. And in case you're wondering, these engine stands are homemade using evergreen rods and sheets. Well, I hope you enjoyed our build of the MEL motor, which is really cool because we actually had three engines to build the three different variations. Oh, here comes Danny the dog. Hey, Danny. How are you doing today? <laughs> what does that mean? Does that mean you're doing good? Oh, okay. So, Danny... We only have one engine left. Do you know what that engine is? Yeah, what? That's right. It is the Oldsmobile 394 from the 1934 Ford two-door sedan. Now, did you know, Danny, that this is my favorite engine? Do you know why? Okay. That's right, because I have an Oldsmobile in my backyard. 1972 Oldsmobile Cutlass 350 and that engine Danny did you know that engine in there is part of that big family you did well of course you did because you and I were in the Oldsmobile Club together right Danny okay Danny so anything else you want to add okay oh I know you want to tell me something don't you okay what you used to like driving around in the Oldsmobile yeah me too that was fun times hey eh, Danny Okay, if that's all you have to do, Danny, all I have to say, then I guess we'll see you later, right? Okay, bye, Danny. We'll see you in the next video where we do the Oldsmobile. Okay, bye-bye. All right, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's our last engine that we have to build. Is of course, that nice Oldsmobile block. So we will see you in the next video. And until next time, everyone, happy model building. Well, I think that brings another great video to a close. It was real fun making it, and I hope you all learned something from it. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave those down in the descriptions below. And if you enjoyed watching these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Pound the notification button down below so that every time I make a new video, you're the first ones to see it. If you'd like to shop with us at Monster Hobbies, don't forget to check out our web address, www.monster-hobbies.ca. Again, I'll leave it in the description below. If you want to support us on Patreon, visit our Patreon account, like these great people here have done. Thank you all for your support over on Patreon. I'll leave the link for that in the description below as well. Again, if you want to share some great stuff with us, do it on our Facebook page. And until next time, everybody, happy model building.